Right now, we have our uh, our good friend, uh, Mr. Raj Tawney, uh, with us right now. Raj, how are you? Finn, I'm wonderful. How are you? I am very, very good. <laughs> uh, we have a we have a uh, little event, I, I do believe, um, that you're involved with coming up uh, this weekend in uh, Huntington, right? Yeah, we have Beards, Bards, and Boom at the Walt Whitman Birthplace, Saturday, 7 to 10. It's going to be crazy. It's a free show and $5 donation we're asking for. If you want me to just go right into it, it's going to be well. Let's talk. Let's talk a little about. <laughs> let's talk a little beforehand about about the uh, impetus for all this. This has to do. Uh, this is a project. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. The Huntington Arts Council Spark Boom. Absolutely. Right. It's all run by the Huntington Arts Council. It's Spark Boom's a project to help the Gen Y uh, emerging creative talent in the community and expose them to new audiences, especially in Long Island community. Right. And you had a bunch of uh, fantastic events last season. Yes. Uh, you had some great, you had some some buildings defaced, and uh, a whole bunch of things happened, which I always I always appreciate a good uh, building defacement. Me too. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, live music and tons of cool stuff going on, and it's got to do with everything from uh, from uh, art of all types, uh, performance art, uh, live art, um, uh, music, poetry, uh, all these different things coming together to to uh, keep the Huntington community vibrant and young. In fact, absolutely. Um- as our fearless leader, Michelle Carolla. Um, Where is Michelle Carolla tonight? Um, she's overworked and exhausted, and I told her to stay home because <laughs> she's working day and night. Um, you know, the funny thing about Spark Broom is everybody th- tends to think now we're some large organization, and they don't realize that we're still a very, very, very small non-for-profit and group of hardworking people, a couple yep. of staffers, interns, volunteers, just dedicated people, and Michelle is overworked, so I told her to relax. But she sends her best, and she misses you a lot. Uh, very good. Yeah, <laughs> Michelle. Michelle's great. And uh, so anyway, Spark Boom is is still alive and well in Huntington. And uh, this week, this Saturday, we have at the Walt Whitman Birthplace, uh, which is a uh, beautiful location right over there. What town is that? At? Is that uh, that's Huntington Huntington Station? Figure. Yeah, but it's um, uh, what is it? Uh, I don't know why I'm blanking out on the name. The town is is something Hills, right? What is it there? Um, I'm not sure if it's Hills. Um, the address is Huntington Station. Yes, but I know. It's but right it's near the Walt Whitman shops, as they someone, call it now. Someone it's will call fancy. me shortly and let me know. Oh, that's okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, the Walt Whitman birthplace, which has, uh, as you know, as you guys know who listen to the show regularly a couple of weeks ago, we had some great stuff uh, for Whitman's uh, birthday right here on the air, uh, a whole bunch of poets locally, and uh, the Walt Whitman birthplace has just become such a uh, great cultural place. It's not just, you know... A, a little clapboard house anymore. Now there's a million things happening there, and this is just one of many, but Spark Boom being over there, I think, is a great thing. Well, yeah, and we wanted to utilize the birthplace on every level. So because we have all different art firms, you know, we're using the stage for our poets. Uh, we have an outdoor music tent. We have a beautiful, beautiful sculpture garden, um, actually featuring uh, an artist sitting next to me right now, Nicole Hickson, who I'm very excited to people to see her work. We have... Uh, Beer sponsor by a great local craft brewery, St. James Brewery. We have Batata Cafe in Northport donating uh, really great organic vegetarian food. Um, am I missing anything? There's an indoor art gallery as well. I mean, it's just crazy. This is the kickoff of our second season. Um, it's probably the mastermind of Michelle to always go bigger and bigger since last year was our first. And she's like, how can we top it? Well, here we go, especially with a quirky name. So. There you go. And, what's, and, and, and the event is also on Facebook, right? With the name of the event on Facebook? Yes. Uh, Beards, Bards, and Boom. It makes a lot of <laughs> sense, doesn't it? Beards for Hey, the, whatever. <laughs> Beards for Walt. Uh, Michelle wanted to have a contest of who can grow the best beard, but we didn't know what to give away, and uh, we figure plenty of hipsters are coming anyway, so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but you can also find more about it just before we go further on. Just go look out, look for Spark Boom. That's the word Spark, the word Boom together. And uh, if you can search it on Facebook, you can search it on Google, and you will find it. And uh, so there's there's tons of great stuff. And 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 uh, we we have an artist with us right now who who is. Uh, who is um, stage? Who is uh, pieces already installed there? Am I right, Nicole? That is correct. I was there on Saturday doing the install, and uh, it went really smoothly. Raj was under a tree taking a nap, but then generously helped me out and carry work to install. I, don't, I wasn't even there. I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> So Nicole, tell us about uh, your work. I actually read a uh, read and saw, and when I say saw, because there are pictures with it, uh, a blog spot through the Spark Boom uh, website. Um, 
tell us about tell us about your work. What it's about? What it's about? Sure, sure. Um, I mostly work with recycled materials. Um, the piece that's going to be in the Spark Boom um, event kickoff event this weekend is made of steel belted radial tires from your car. Okay. And Hopefully not from my car. <laughs> well, that's what I joke around about. People ask me where I get the tires from, and I uh, I joke and say, well, didn't you see the cinder blocks under your car with the <laughs> tires missing? Um, no, I get them from local places. They're taken off people's cars. They're going to go and be recycled. So I'm upcycling them into some fine art um, and using some bicycle tires as well. So this piece is kind of um, my piece to Walt that it's at the birthplace. And he lived there the first four years of his life, and it kind of resembles blades of grass growing so you'll see it come down check yeah. it out yeah okay very cool yeah. so so uh, what is that what's your usual medium do you usually work with this yeah I usually work with tires um, I took a little break this season and I started working with plastic bottles which is a totally okay. different um, kind of yeah it's totally different I'm going from something heavy and visually very dense to something airy ethereal and light that you can see through um, but I'm back to tires I try to step away but they were pulling me back in so I had to answer <laughs> so so uh, how, how did you how did where did you go to school um, well currently I'm a graduate student here at Stony Brook University in the master's program for fine art mm -hmm. and uh, I teach here as well an introduction to sculpture class I work for the Department of Student Activities as well as a graduate student um, but before that I started my upper education for higher education at Nassau Community College and then I went to California to Cal State San Bernardino okay yeah, fancy. I'm back. Yeah, fa fancy <laughs> Cal State system. It was great though. Uh, so has has your has your interest always been in in these kind of larger pieces like this? Or? Yeah, I can't help it. I like public and installation art. Um, okay. I've made. I I'm, if you visit my website, um, you could see a palm tree that I created from steel belted radial tires. It's 18 and a half feet. Um, it was on <laughs> display for a year in San Diego. And somebody bought it. It was cool. And what is your uh, website, Nicole? It's uh, Nicole Hickson, like Nixon with an H, art.com. <laughs> Shameless self-promotion. No, no, no. This is Please. <laughs> All right, so that's N-I-C-O-L-E-H-I-X-S-O-N, oh, art. X-O-N, yeah, no I thought S. I said that. Oh, no, did no I say S? S? You did. I'm sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, one more time, N-I-C, it's self-promotion time. Yeah. N-I-C-O-L-E-H-I-X-O-N-A-R-T dot com. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, thank you. Um, so, so, um, so are you working on other pieces currently uh, besides what we will see at the uh, Whitman Birthplace this weekend? Absolutely. I'm getting ready for my thesis show this year at Stony Brook um, at the Zucar Gallery in Staller. And um, I'm going to be making another tree, actually. I figure I'm going back to my roots with oh. the tires in general. Oh. oh, that was good. Um, thank you. You saw what I did there, right? Yeah, I saw that. Um, it'll be a Yoshino cherry tree blooming in the Zucar Gallery. So that'll be like 20 feet or so from plastic and rubber. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, so uh, once again, there'll be multiple artists at Spark Boom uh, this weekend, including Nicole Hickson. Hickson, right? Thank no you. S. <laughs> uh, um, and um, it should be a really, really cool installation. Raj, what other uh, artists are, are, um, are uh, going to be there uh, for... You know, people have installations. Well, in terms of the sculpture ga gallery, we have uh, Nancy Wong, who's a great young local scul um, sculptor. She has really cool stuff. You can find it on the gallery. We kind of place the sculptures really, you have to kind of dig. So some of them are out in the open, like Nicole Hickson's, and some are, you know, really entrenched in the garden. You have uh, Jin Kang Park, who has this really cool string kind of contraption sculpture. Um, there's actually a video we're producing. We're going to put it out in one of the blogs on an article about her to see how she actually does puts a string on her sculpture uh we also have uh, let me think god we have so we have eric arahu who has a real big boat he landed right in the middle of the garden he created this big boat called betty sue and it's right <laughs> in the middle of the garden and it's like there's actually he put some books in there to kind of give you some clues as to why he put it there it's really cool stuff there's so much to see. It's over 20 artists and then there's also an indoor art gallery where you can see a lot of great artists inside there as well i mean it's it's really c incredible to see how all these artists have um, put their pieces in and how they all kind of form together. Looking, so cool. Looking forward to it. It should be super cool. Nicole, thank you for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. Thank Great you very to see much. You. Yeah. Looking forward. We, sh we, should, we should interview again in the future, maybe before you have your... Uh, 
presentation in the gallery. I would here. love that. Thank you. Love that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Nicole. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Nicole, send in the next victim. All right, you got it. Thank you, gentlemen. Pardon me. I just want to say that, um, so the indoor, you're going to have uh, poetry and spoken word, and you're going to have an outdoor tent with music where actually Robert Sloan and Tom Moran and Rory Kelly are going to be. Oh, very nice. And, um, you know, while you get a, while you get a free beer, uh, thanks to St. James Brewery. I love the fact that he keeps saying free beer because he knows what's going to get me there. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I know you're going to be there too, Finn. That's right. you, and you, could, you know, if you don't want to hear poetry, you can go to music. If you don't want to hear music, go to poetry. See art. I mean, it's, it's going to really tingle every one of your senses, and that's really what we're going for. We want you to really have a great experience. Just like when you listen to a young man called Tom Moran. Hi, Tom. How are you? How are you doing, Finn? What's up? I am doing great. Uh, so you're going to be at this event uh, on uh, on Saturday? Yes, I am. And tell us a little about yourself first. Uh, how long have you been uh, playing, singing, performing live? I've been playing and singing and performing <laughs> for a very long time, since uh, I was about, I think my first show was at uh, a dive bar when I was about 13. Okay. And I've uh, been doing it ever since pretty Where much Where was the nonstop. dive bar, out of curiosity? It was in Massapequa. What was the uh, name it, of the dive bar? It was once called the Courthouse. Okay. And uh, it's it's not it's no longer called that. But is the bar still there? There is a bar there. I don't know what it's called anymore. But it's nothing like the same vibe, right? I think it, it's it's very much the same oh, vibe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. A, a dive bar. <laughs> There you go. Now you know I, I, I uh, as as I have discussed multiple times on my show, much to the chagrin of the audience, um, my first first time I played was very much in a dive bar too, which a dive bar that became the Checkmate Inn very locally. Mm-hmm. You know, right here in in uh, Setauket, Stony Brook area, and uh, but when I played there, it was called the New Moon Cafe. It was a wine and cheese place. That uh, this is how long ago this is, my friends. Uh, it was Matus Rosé. And cheese is what they served, and that was a hip thing, believe it or not. A wine and cheese dive. That is correct. <laughs> That's something I've never heard of. <laughs> That's right. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, hence it's not here anymore. But uh, so, you're gonna play something for us? If you'd like me to. I'd yeah. love you to. All right. Let's um, hear something. First of all, let's yeah. Why don't we pull that close? Sure. Um, so I'll be, I'll be playing this on Saturday. Um, this is a. Uh, kind of a, a folkier song I do uh, kind of folkier stuff and more rock and roll stuff I have a band that I'll be playing with um, okay this one I will be playing uh, alone during the set it'll be a short little break for that uh, this is called Stay it's a pretty new song I was dreaming in the day I was absent out in space Or as I'd prefer to say I was wide awake In a clear and striking dream And as crazy as it seemed Any other reality Could not compare Oh, say you will, say you will And there's nothing that I wouldn't do To hear you saying, say you will stay May you feel as complete in your life As I do when I'm near your side And may no one steal your pride away, away, away. Well, I know there is no guarantee in youth that has no clarity, in the world is no humanity. But with that heat, I still believe ain't no one stands a chance at stopping you, girl. I'll follow you each step of the way. So say you will, say you will, and there's nothing that I wouldn't do to hear you say it, say you will stay, stay, stay. Oh 
down the window Oh, why fog is rising on the lake You're gonna get stuck in the rain If you leave You're gonna get stuck in the rain Sweet babe We say you will Say you will And there's nothing that I wouldn't do To hear you say it Say you will stay Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Thank you. I, I usually like to say that that song is obviously called Stay. Cause it's <laughs> you should give it another title. And be very mysterious. To see. <laughs> That's right. So, so you're going to be playing with a band as well, as you said. Yes. And, um, and uh, what, um, uh, what's the configuration of the band? Um, we got uh, my, one of my best friends, Mike McManus, playing drums. Okay. He's really great. Um, he rocks out really hard, and I love that. Um, we got another good friend of mine, uh, Fran Berkman, on bass guitar. Okay. And uh, my friend Gus on guitar. And um, another friend of mine, Lauren Dealman, doing backup vocals. And oh, very some, cool. Uh, so a nice full band. Yep, nice full rock and roll very band. Nice. Where can people find out more about uh, your music? Um, I got a website, tomranmusic.com. Uh, we're also on Facebook. Uh, just as Tom Moran as a you know a musician's page, and that's uh, T O M M O R A N. Yep, you got it. Okay, very cool. Tom, thanks so much so much for joining oh. us here on WUSB. Thank you. And so much we for look forward me. to seeing you at Spark Moon, my friend. All right, I'm looking forward to it. Too. Cool, man. Thank you. Thanks. And we'll have a little quick word here from uh, Mr. Lou Reed. Hi, this is Lou Reed, and you're listening to WUSB Stony Brook. And that was a quick word from Lou Reed. Raj, who who do we have next? Well, Finn, um, <laughs> would you... <laughs> Smooth, you know, you guys are so lucky you don't see all the backstage shenanigans going on here. I had a lot of coffee, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's quite all right. I'm overworked. So what's um, up? Well, um, I'd like to bring in Stephen T. T. Licardi, who mm -hmm. is a wonderful poet and author, and he is also going to be a host of the spoken word section at Beards, Bards, and Boo. Very nice. And and that's going to be like a separate stage. Is that what the deal is? Yeah, and there's actually a great indoor stage uh, right in the Walt Women birthplace. They have a cool center, and there's a stage, and there's some seating, and it's actually right near the beer sponsor, so that's wonderful as well. The guy's drawing me into everything over there. <laughs> and you're going to hear some really cool, uh, great local spoken word artists. Um, and Stephen, I'm not sure if he's going to be reading himself, but maybe he'll read something now. So. Stephen, come on in. Sure thing. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. Tell us, tell us a little about your background as far as how, how you got into all this uh, as a writer, etc. Sure. Uh, so I started writing when I was about 10 years old. Um, I didn't really get into performance until about three years ago, actually right around when I was in uh, an undergrad in college. Um, and I finally kind of came to this conclusion where I wanted to share with people um, my expression and, you know, create a performance out of it. And that's kind of how I got into it. Um, and things have just kind of gone from there. You know, I've become an author now and I perform now two to three times a week so I'm really blessed and I try and use my work as a platform for raising awareness of various social issues usually things that are kind of thrown into the dark um, so yeah such as? well I have uh, quite a few pieces on uh, mental illness I write a lot about that actually suicide prevention I've done things on eating disorders poverty all kinds of you know social issues like I said and you know it's meant to empower and to bring awareness and to hopefully create some kind of social change that's what I'm looking to do okay and um, <clears throat> you um, you have your own uh, website as well right or yes own, yes I what, do. Is, what is the website website is the svenbo.com that's my stage name and that's spelled T H E S V E N B O dot com. Mm -hmm. And I've got 
you know, all kinds of resources up there. You can read more about my stuff. I've got a video up there now and some articles and stuff like that. So, yeah, feel free to check it out. Get on the email list. All that Very chance. cool. Now you're involved in, in some other local poetry uh, organizations? or Oh, yeah, plenty. Um, there's uh, the Bards Initiative, which is a huge resource of mine. They helped me publish my first book. Mm-hmm. Um, there's the um, Poet... The Performance Poets Association. There's uh, Poets in Nassau. There's... Um, there's the open mic which is run by street poets nyc out of brooklyn Mm -hmm. i mean i've done you know i collaborate with a lot of different organizations from the hamptons to manhattan so uh you know there's plenty of them out there okay so what are you going to read for us now so i'm going to do a poem which i just shot a video for uh which is meant to raise awareness of self-injury uh cutting as it's you know more formally known and Mm -hmm. it's called we often cross the lines we draw okay go ahead He was his own butcher. He used to section himself off by cut, his worth determined by the delicateness of his slices. He was a pig for the slaughter, but everybody knew him as a dog. He was his own best friend, but only he knew his secrets. The diagonal lines that marked his thighs, highways to heartache, runways for the planes that never landed, carrying all his pain. They crashed in the sea of tears he shed sometimes. There were no survivors. He dictates the blade with a scalpel's precision, a surgeon's keen eyes trained to distinguish vein from artery. His artistry is incomplete, made of misplaced media, his skin, a canvas on which the paint is spilled from within. But there's only one hue, and when the work is finished, he calls it regret. And yet, the heat released when the epidermis is cleaved like cleavers falling in his mind, a tender eyes as peace is addicting. He finds relief in the release of adrenaline, the power when his fear, his ease, gives him a false sense of control. But when he runs out of room on his thighs, he moves to wrist. Harder to hide, but he can't resist, so he cuts, drags the razor or scissor or anything in reach across the space between his hand and elbow. No one will know. He'll keep it up his sleeve, the same one he wears his heart on, until the blood seeps through to the surface like his pain. Derelicts strewn among the wreckage, but pain always sends search parties, searching for survivors across infinite square miles that these new highways cannot stretch to reach his happiness. Set aside your cutlery, my friend. We'll preserve what's left without pouring salt into your wounds. By butcher's hook or crook, we're going to get through this. And when you're fixed, the person you are will hang the person you were from it. And the scars will not haunt us like ghosts, but watch over us like angels. Thank you very much. Stephen, that was beautiful. Thank you. Very, very nice. Do you want to read one more piece for us? Sure. So I do one for... um, eating disorders as well. I actually was commissioned by a friend of mine, um, you know, who struggled and she asked, you know, could you do something for this? And so, uh, this piece is called From A to B. To consume or be consumed. To eat is to eat myself alive. I'm starving from the outside. My insides scream at the sight of a mirror. Have I gotten thinner? I shouldn't get my hopes up. I see only flaws where life draws pictures on my skin. They read... You're dying. I want to feel confident, not like a beehive bloated with a billion stings that hides a queen I can't seem to find because my bones imprison me. I want to feel confident. I'm hungry. No, I'm fat. I'm a beached whale, but beached whales drown when the tide comes in or from dehydration or suffocate beneath the weight of their own bodies. My hair has started falling out. I've stopped menstruating. I'd pass up my last meal just to avoid the frustration. I had my first heart attack at 23. Maybe it was trying to tell me something, but I couldn't hear it over the sound of the media industry constantly glorifying the human body. What's my favorite food? Anxiety, because it's the only thing I seem to eat. I can't focus on my income. Too focused on my intake. Calorie counting down my days. Chip salad, meat cake, a buffet filled with mistakes. I regret the last thing I ate. 
I do cardio at the gym, burning for hours, but I'm just running from ash. The phoenix has devoured my mind, is a vulture, circling the carrion, heaped atop a soul that this life has abandoned. I can't win. I know this skin God has given me is not a dungeon I should feel punished in, but a vehicle to take me from A to B. Not anorexia or bulimia, but anomaly to beauty. Still, I can't see what most see. The faces on the TV tell me I need to be a certain weight I can't achieve in magazines and movie screens. I'm binging on broken dreams only to regurgitate all the things I can't be. We're force-fed ideals that are impossible to swallow. I tried to be what I thought was sexy, but it only left me bereft and hollow. An empty stomach is the same as an empty heart. Food shouldn't own you or define who you are. You can't consume yourself. You'll starve. Thank you. Stephen T. Licardi right here on... uh Finn's Revolution on uh, WUSB, Stony Brook, Stephen T. Licardi. Um, and uh, you can check out more of uh, Stephen's uh, work from the Sven Bo, that's uh, T H E S V E N B O dot com. And also, of course, this Saturday at Spark Boom in, uh, at the Whitman Birthplace in Huntington. And uh, Stephen, Thank you so much for joining us on Finn's Revolution, my friend. Finn, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Got it. We'll speak again. Most certainly. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, so Spark Boom, once again, this uh, Saturday, um, over at the Whitman Birthplace in Huntington. We're all very excited to be there. I'm going to be there, too. And uh, please come out, and it's going to be a blast with a whole bunch of really cool stuff uh, happening in... Um, in Huntington, and it really keeps Huntington alive. This is the lifeblood of culture that's going on right here. Um, who do we have next here, uh, Raj? Well, Finn, coming down... I'm oh, sorry. Um, we have Robert Sloan, who's a great singer-songwriter, uh, really talented guy, and uh, we're very happy to have him down here. So, that's all awesome. Robert, hi. Come on over, Robert. Yep. Robert, you guys are sharing guitars. Yeah, yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah, Tom's a, a friend of mine for a little while. Okay. Um, so he lets you... Whose guitar is it? Is it Tom's? It's actually Tom's. Well, you better be nice to Tom. Of course, always, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell, us, tell us a little about yourself first. Okay. Um, well, I have a music business background. Uh, I went to the school of Oneonta, SUNY Oneonta, and uh, studied music business. Um, took a couple classes in, in recording and stuff like that. And when I got out, I started working with Esther Creative Group and Stinky Records. Uh, Esther Creative Group managed uh, Lou Reed, Cake, She Wants Revenge, uh, The Annuals, and a bunch of great bands. Um, and they, in working with them um, on like websites and stuff, it was mostly like intern kind of work and stuff. Okay. Um, so from there, I, I, after I did my hours, um, I ended up working with ASCAP for two years. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, you know, worked in distribution uh, as an analyst there. And okay. So then from that... Uh, so you're one of the people that make us fill out all these forms here at the station? Yep, mm -hmm, right, <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. and a you bastard. A lot of bars hate me too, but I, <laughs> but now I work in the bar industry as well. I book and promote shows and okay. put on other acts. And where can people find out more about your music? Um, my own music, you can go to Facebook.com, Robert Peter Sloan. Um, and I mean, as far as the scene, I mean, I just want to expand the scene in Long Island. Um, and I also elsewhere. I just want the music to be good. And as a promoter, I tried to t I got into it because I didn't like how a lot of promoters take advantage of musicians mm -hmm. uh, having experienced it. And uh, so I, I also have a little bit of a background in putting on like shows with um, li like Off Points West and stuff like that with friends of mine. Okay. So um, so I want I'm seeing the bigger picture, but I'm living the smaller local <laughs> scene. Gotcha. Uh, so so you're going to be performing at Spark Boom uh, this Saturday as well, right? Yep. Okay. What are you going to play for us now? Uh, I think I'm going to play a song that I wrote when I was about 17. Uh, it's called Prison, and it uh, borrows some lyrics actually from uh, some of my sister's old poetry when I was a kid growing up. Um, okay. So this song's called Prison. I built this prison. And I'll admit it readily There'll be no pointing of fingers 
and I don't need an escape plan Sometimes I think maybe, maybe there is a reason Maybe there isn't a reason for anything And we'll just wander aimlessly all of our lives And without ever questioning our own mortal existence But if we make our own purpose We could find out what it's worth It's worth and if our questions linger Let them roam their course Yeah, yeah, yeah Seems like at best all we manage to do Superimpose our emotions and judgments Onto each other like movies on the screen And though we may come home Never take the message home We never take the message home When our house lights come on So come on And we'll just wander aimlessly all of our lives And without ever questioning Our own mortal existence But if we make our own purpose We can find out what it's worth And if our questions linger Let them roam their course Yeah, yeah, yeah Seems like at best all we manage to do Time to take some action 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 Robert Sloan, very, very cool. Cool, man. Thanks. Digging it. Uh, you really have an interesting uh, guitar style you've developed there. Yeah, I'm uh, pretty much self-taught after I learned the rudiment chords. Uh -huh. And uh, I started doing this, like, slap thing. Um, but, you know, it's kind of folky, but kind of like rock and... I yeah, it's it's really unique and very, very cool. And you're a really sharp player, so that's nice. Oh, thank you very much. And the song is beautiful. Thank you. You know, and we have to credit your sister too, right? What's oh, your sister's course. name? Uh, Jennifer Sloan. <laughs> okay, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Co-writer. <laughs> yeah, my sisters were a big influence. I have two older sisters, and uh, their taste in music also influenced my uh, liking for music. And What'd you listen to growing up? Um, I listened to like a lot of. Actually, I listened to growing up. I listened to like Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, all the grunge stuff. Um, it was a little bit later on, probably towards like high school, where I started listening to more Beatles. Um, Cat Stevens, Nick Drake came later. Uh, Modest Mouse, a uh, bunch of different bands like that. Um, but I probably I draw most of my own inspiration from, well, at least when I was younger, when I felt uh, certain of my stuff just came naturally, it was mostly from uh, meditation. And I would do, like, hold a chord over and over again, and just as I was learning guitar, and I would just sit there and meditate and then and get into... Uh, like this this thing and then I'd fall asleep with my guitar in my hands and then go to bed and practice in my sleep and mm -hmm. in my dreams and and I almost felt like I was channeling other spirits that came through me and it wasn't me writing the music when it came to that wow almost like dream state writing mm -hmm, yeah okay do you do, are you like a uh, are you a uh a formal uh, uh, meditation practitioner, or are you just? I'm actually. Uh, I took a lot, a lot of break 
uh, from it throughout college and stuff, I, I kind of lost track of it all. And it, it's not actually until recently that I've been getting into it more again. And what type of meditation specifically? Is there something specific or is it um, something you found? Well, I do like obviously walking meditation and, and, and okay. stuff like that. But um, uh, mostly it's just sitting there and just clearing my mind, uh, sitting almost lotus, but I, can't, <laughs> I don't have okay. the flexibility anymore because I got a bum knee. But, <laughs> um, but yeah. I know yeah, that feeling. Yeah. But I'll, I'll sit in like Indian style and just sit and meditate and clear your head. Yep, and do yoga and stuff like that. Walking through the park. Yeah, we have we have a friend of ours who uh, of the station who uh, comes in periodically. He's a he teaches TM transcendental meditation. Oh, great. Really, really uh, interesting. And my wife and I have been practitioners for years. Oh, so. great, nice, yeah, it's, cool. It's a uh, yeah, and it doesn't make a difference if you do TM, whatever you do. But it's it's nice to have a centering. Um, event in your life that you can go to a centering place you can go to and that place doesn't have to be a physical place that place can just be in your head yep uh, I think it, it's really important for a creative person or anybody mm -hmm. for that matter uh, not only to relieve stress and kind of escape but um, but also it, it, I find that it it clears everything so that you can write uh, more fulfilling and feel more connected mm -hmm. with everything uh, it helps with being present in every situation that you're put in mm -hmm. and uh, just living and really looking at people and I think in our society today especially with a lot of noise and this and that being pushed uh, all the time uh, it's really important that everybody does it yeah there was a time when we, we uh, I was thinking about with uh, one of my with a person who who uh, actually uh, is a TM instructor I, I was think we were thinking about having just uh, two hours of silence on the show oh, I love it but you know sometimes that happens anyway with failing technology right. so right. <laughs> we didn't want people just to think it was a regular night right <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I look forward to sometimes, sometimes to power outages. Yes, you know? I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Robert, thank you so much for joining us. And we're going to see you on Saturday night at uh, Spark Boom at the Walt Whitman Birthplace in Huntington. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. Great it's to have you on. And uh, we'll see you again. Great. Okay. Well, hi, Raj. Oh, hello, Finn. We're talking to Raj Tawney here from uh, Spark Boom, a uh, great, great project uh, run by the, uh, mm -hmm. well, supervised by the Huntington uh, Arts Council over there, and hopefully they don't supervise them too much because they're doing some great work. Yes, and Michelle Carolla just texted me to make sure everybody knows that it's 7 to 10 p.m., the event. Ah, oh, good point. 7 to 10 <coughs> p.m. at the Walt Whitman Birthplace. It's a wonderful way to end your Saturday night or begin it, depending on how you see it. That's right, <laughs> and and uh, it's it's just a great great uh, event. I'm I'm so happy to be going myself, and uh, just give us a little what kind of stuff is going to be available one more time, Raj. Just yeah, sure. So we're going to have an outdoor sculpture garden, which is really cool because it's a great property. Um, the whole event features over 20 artists themselves. There's going to be an indoor art gallery as well. There's going to be a spoken word section, poetry section, hosted by Stephen T. Licardi, who you just heard before. Mm -hmm. You're going to have, uh, you heard two of the three uh, performing acts, Robert Sloan, Tom Moran Band, and Rory Kelly as well is going to be there. She's a great singer-songwriter. Yes, yeah, she is. Shout out to Rory. And... Um, uh, did I cover all four bases of that? Uh, so you have 20 artists, you have poetry, you have music, you also have a wonderful craft beer sponsor, which Finn is uh, very looking much forward to tasting. That's right. Uh, that's St. James Brewery, and you also have Vitata Cafe in Northport with great organic uh, vegetarian food. They're going to donate sandwiches, so you, that'll soak up all the wonderful craft beer you're going to drink. <laughs> the event is 7 to 10. It's a free event. Don't forget, um, we are asking for a $5 no donation because we are a very small non-for-profit. Believe it or not, we're just really, really, really hardworking people, um, and that's really it. We just really care. We're not. People tend to think we're bigger than we are, and I, I guess it's because we do good work. I that's because your events are so great. Thanks, Finn. Raj, Tony, thank you uh, so much for joining us on Finn's Revolution, and we will see you at Spark Boom this Saturday night at 7 p.m. at the Walt Whitman Birthplace in Huntington. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot, Finn. We'll see you there, too. Yeah, you will.